Over the last couple of months, I've been growing my team with very talented people that are really good at Power BI to support me on different Power BI projects for my clients. Now, at the beginning, I've been doing this screening process on the basis of resumes. Now, I've received hundreds of applications and quickly figured out that a resume is not always a good reflection of the skills that somebody brings to the table. So, I figured I need to come up with a different approach that lets me quickly figure out if somebody is really good or not. Now, that approach I'm going to share with you in this video and it's helpful if you're looking to land your Power BI dream job so that you know how you can convince somebody by really showing your skills instead of talking about your skills in a resume. And also for those that are on the other side of the table, just like me, looking for very talented Power BI developers. All right, so let's dive in. Now let me start off by saying that the motivation of why you want to work for a certain organization or company is super important. Also, the cultural fit, right? So how well do you fit within the team that you're going to be part of? But all of that is more for the interview process itself. So uh, when you're talking to the people that you're going to work with. Now, what I want to focus on right now is how can you convey your skills even before you talk to anybody? Now, the usual way of doing that is through a resume, where you just list all of your experiences, what you have done, what kind of projects you have worked on. However, I've seen this is not always really a good reflection of your true skills. Now, that is frustrating because on the one hand, the person that is applying might actually be better than what comes across in the resume. And on the other side, if you're the recruiter, well, you have to kind of deduct the skills from what you read on the resume, but you don't really have proof for it. Now, instead of basing the, well, the screening process on resumes, I've decided to do it on the basis of, well, actual Power BI reports. So I ask applicants to send me their Power BI report. And for me, that has proven to be very successful so far. And that is quite a luxury position for the industry that we're in. Being a Power BI developer or a Tableau developer or whatever tool you're working with to create your report allows you to share your work. And that is the best proof of your skills. Now let's take, for example, somebody that has five years of experience working on different projects with Power BI versus somebody that has just one year of experience. Now, you probably think the person with five years of experience must be better than the person with one year. However, if that person that has not so much experience is very passionate about building reports in Power BI and has been learning super much, super steep learning curve, can be that that person is actually better. Now, on a resume, this doesn't come across, but in a Power BI report, it does, and I've seen that it does. So instead of talking about it like in a resume, let's head over to Power BI and see an actual example of how such a demo report, application report, actually could look like. Now, this is based on an example that was sent to me from one of the applicants, but it's slightly adapted, all right? So I'm going to flip through it. So over here, you see it's kind of like a resume Power BI report, but not one that I often see on LinkedIn, which is just kind of a resume, but then copy paste it over to a nice looking Power BI report. That's not the point. I wanna see your Power BI skills in action. And that is actually what we have over here, which will become more visible when we get to the data model as well. So over here, we just have a resume page, which we will talk about a bit later. Then we have a city page. And here we have some nice little statistics for the different cities that the person lived in. And the last page is about interests. So the activities and sports the person did over time and how much of it and with whom, the marathons that the person run, etc. All right, now before I would dive into the visualizations themselves, I would actually always go to data model and see oh, what data are we working with here, with what data set did this person choose, and how is the model set up? Is it just one big table, or did somebody really put in some effort to set up a proper data model? Now, let me head over to the model first and talk a bit more about the data that we got here. So you see, we actually have all different kinds of tables, so not just one big table, where we have a fact table like with the live events, the live phases, sport activities, and some dimension tables. Now, Let's also have a look here at the data view. Now here you see, for example, that live events or live phases table that's tracking the events on a year month basis. And then all of these dimension tables like language, let's click on that one. You see the languages uh, that the applicant speaks, the marathons that this person run, 
And this already tells me, ah, oh, somebody didn't just go for the AdventureWorks dataset. This is already much better, much more unique, and also gives me more insights into who the person is. Because the choice of the data and the report topic already gives away quite a bit. All right, so that's one thing. Now let's go back to that model again. Now from the model, you can see that this person is not a complete beginner because we have actually more than one fact table, two fact tables. We have dimensions, we have shared dimensions, that calendar table that you see there over the, on the top is shared with the live phases table, as well as the sport activities table. So it shows that this person has some understanding when it comes to data modeling, which is already giving away quite a bit. It gives me a lot of information. Then another thing that I love to look at is the date table. And I think 90% of the Power BI reports that I got did not get it right. And that is how to set up the date table correctly. Now, for example, what would I look at? Well, if we go over here to calendar table, then here in the formula bar, I can see, okay, how is it set up? Is it done with DAX? Is it done in Power Query? Now, in this case, it is uh, done in DAX. Okay, that's, that's already good. Then I would check, all right, is auto date and time on? Now, most people just leave it on. So if you go here to option settings, options, and then here under data load, you see auto date and time is turned off. Ah, it's already good. Then. If I go here to the calendar table itself, open it up, you see there's a hierarchy. Ah, that's also positive. And if I go here to the month, you see here on the advanced, we have a sort by column. So all different kinds of steps that are performed here that already tell me, ah, that person is not a complete beginner anymore. Understands why that custom date table is necessary and also knows how to do it. And you might think, why is he so obsessed with if that date table is set up correctly? It's just one component in the whole Power BI report. But the thing is, it's very reflective on other aspects in the report. I've seen over and over again that if the date table is set up correctly, the DAX patterns that I see being used in measures or calculated columns is much more complex. And also the visualizations are much more advanced. The designs are usually better. So it is just one indicator of at what level is that person that is sending in that report. So day table, really important. Okay, so you see, I always have a quick look at the data, how the model is set up, and then I go to the front end and have a look at the visualizations and also what DAX patterns are being used. So as an example here, let's move over to this page, which is city page. Now here on this page, we see that the maximum and also the last and the first point are highlighted on the line. And I know oh, somebody needs some kind of DAX measure for that. So I'm going to find that DAX measure here on the right hand side. So in the data pane. Now here, I was hoping to see a measure table. Well, it's a bit of a missed, missed chance, right? So I see that this person didn't use a measure table. Now, so that means I have to look for it. Now let me just type in max is probably what's being used. Max number of citizen there. Yeah, that's the one. And here I see that this person uses a summarize function to summarize the table with the population data for Berlin, then summarizes it by the year, and then sums up the number of citizens. First, all right, stores it in a variable get all population, then iterates over that table, calculates the sum, all right, and then returns the maximum of those calculated values at the year level. And then over here, returns the maximum value if the number of citizens is equal to the maximum value, only for that data point. All right, so maybe not how I would have written it, but it does show an understanding of well, filter context, row context, different functions that are being used. And the same thing you can do also with other patterns, right? So maybe you want to show that you are able to re uh, do ranking or calculate the open cases, do basket analysis, all different kinds of DAX patterns that you can integrate in your Power BI report to show your skills. Okay, so now let's also talk about the design and the visualizations themselves. And for that, I'm going to go to the very first page again. I'm clicking here on the pages at the bottom, but I also notice there is a nice little menu on the left hand side, a nice little page navigation. Now what really stands out to me for this report is the overall design. So the design is quite unique. It is not like any other report that I received. 
uh, as a part of the application process and also quite a bit different from other reports that I see on social media. So it stands out in a very good way. I will remember this report. Now, also here, a custom theme is used. There are no big misalignments. As yeah, so you see here, these little shapes are nicely aligned. There's enough space around the visuals. So that is all really good. Would I do it exactly the same way? No. However, it is, it is a very pleasant report to look, uh, look at, and it is also consistently used, this design, throughout the report. And that is also important. Now, that tells me that this person is also able to come up with a unique branded design for my customers, right? Now, if you look here at the visualizations, I see, oh, hmm, not your standard bar and line chart, so that's kind of interesting. What's, what's up there? So I'm, for example, kind of interested in what is this here. So you see all of these columns have equal height. You might think, hmm, what is that exactly? But that tells me, ah, oh, from this year, 2017 to 2018, that person was working as a freelancer. So it's like color coding. And that actually gives you a better representation than just saying 2017 till 2020 on, on a resume. Here you visually can see it. When you hover over it, get a nice little tooltip, which is consistent with the design, and that gives me all of the details. So that's pretty cool. Now, I also see a little toggle there at the top. Now let me click on it. And that switches the whole thing into a timeline. Now, a timeline visual, I know, is not a native visual. There are quite some tricks that you need to do to get there, right? And that is also actually one of my videos, right? So I know that this person is actively watching YouTube or following blogs is probably up to date on the latest developments that are going on in Power BI. And that shows a lot of motivation as well, right? So that's very positive. Now, let me just hover over one of these points. You see a nice little tooltip is popping up. And in that tooltip, there is also a picture, which shows me then, ah, that person knows how to work with images, right? Now, let's also go here to the city page. Now here, see that there's a slicer above the map visual. So over here, we can switch between different metrics, like the number of cinemas, number of public uh, libraries, etc. So I would check that out, how it's set up, what kind of uh, hover effect the person chose. Here we have some icons. Also here, the quality of icons that was chosen. Do I like them? And so that gives away a little bit of the personal style, the design style. Then here for the last page, the interest page, here again, a slicer that allows us to switch between different marathons that he or she run. And then when I hover over it, it gives me oh, that picture a little bit bigger. Now, besides the visualization tools that were integrated in this report, I probably would also look for opportunities to integrate other visual tools. Uh, so think of uh, field parameters or numeric parameters. Think of conditional formatting that you can integrate or drill through and drill down. Integrate all of these different things into your report to show your skills. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but what if the focus of that Power BI developer job is in Power Query. Well, you can also have a look at Power Query, right? So if I go here to transform data, now here in Power Query, I see straight away, ah, oh, the person knows query parameters. So that's already good. Now, of course, I do not have access to the sources unless you would go for a public online source, right? That would actually have been nice. But in this case, we don't have that. But that doesn't take away the ch my chance to have a look at these queries. Now, if I just see, okay, that person made a connection to an Excel file imported and that's it, well, it's not very impressive, right? But if I see, oh, that person uh, did combine from folder or is using maybe even custom functions, well, that would tell me a lot about somebody's skills. Now, if I go to one of these queries, I think here at the bottom, here for FD softwares, we, for example, have an unpivoted column step. So, ah, the person knows when to pivot or unpivot the data. And also here, change type with locale. Not just a normal change type step, not with locale. It's these little things that give away a lot about what this person was thinking when they were setting up the report. And if I would be the one applying, I probably would on purpose look for a data set that needs a little bit of uh, data transformation or just make the data a little bit more messy so that you can show off your skills, right? Now, so you see, you can show in a Power BI report that you have Power Query skills, data modeling skills, uh, visualization skills. It is all here in a Power BI report. And you would not believe 
how quickly you can see if it's worth inviting somebody for an interview. It's much more helpful to display your skills like this over just a resume. All right, so I hope that you now have a good overview of what things I would be looking for in a Power BI report that is part of an application. Now, that means you could integrate things like this in the Power BI report that you're going to build for your application. But don't try to replicate what uh, we have been looking at here, because I'm pretty sure that some of you are now going to ask in the comment section, can you share that report with me so that you can adapt it a little bit and then use that for your application. But that's not the point, right? So it tells me so much that what the data is that you're going to use for, uh, for your Power BI report. And that, those choices and how you translate that into a data model, the design, the visualizations, it is all about that. So make it unique. So it, on purpose, I'm not going to share this report. Now, then also if you're on the other side of the table, maybe you want to consider this as well as part of your recruitment process, because for me, it's really uh, helping a lot. Um, and I think it is a better approach than uh, just scanning resumes. Now, and if you made it this far into the video and you're thinking, well, that all sounds good and nice, but the Power BI reports that I've been creating, they're all confidential because they are all for my current or previous employer. And therefore I have nothing to show. Well, don't use that as an excuse, right? I get this excuse many times that people say, oh, I cannot share anything. However, you do have time to build a report on just some other data that is not confidential. And that also tells a lot about how motivated you are to actually get that position. However, it's still better than standing over Power BI reports that have confidential data, because unfortunately, those reports I also get sometimes. So don't do that. <laughs> All right, so I hope that you got a lot of value from this and that you land your Power BI developer dream job or you find your dream Power BI developer for your team. And I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one.